Chapter 3. Positive Thought It takes but one positive thought when given a chance to survive and strive to overpower an entire army of negative thoughts. Robert H. Shuttler Whatever you choose to think will become your life experience. You have over 60,000 thoughts a day. It is your job to keep so many information under control and keep it positive by asking yourself every day, How do I feel? Your frequency must be balanced and in tune with the universe. The universal law of manifestation attracts a mirror that reflects your virtual reality. Therefore, by changing and charging your thought pattern, you can shift your vibrating energy to whatever you want. Once you feel it deep inside, the universe will change to your new strong vibrating feelings. The universal law of creation does not mix up its understanding of the frequency it receives. Hence, you must not violate this ancient law. It is certain and does so in obedience to the law by which the universe was created. The better you feel, the more you attract things that help you feel good. Think hard and reflect your thoughts to this. It will make you become powerful on a higher degree of nobility, as well as more cosmetically aware. I strongly recommend that your own personal secret shifter be constantly on the neutral channel. Some of you will say, Either said than done. Moreover, I've been trying to change my reality. However, I'm not the only one doing that. Yes, I agree to this point. Now, let's go over each part of your comment. Easier said than done. Now, analyze this saying and its belief. This is a negative remark. You are focused on the negative and do not even realize it. Do you follow now? To better understand frequency, think of it as a wave, a particular pitch or vibration that intervenes in space or time. Example, satellite in space sends pictures, sounds repeatedly with the hope that someday or somebody like you out there will pick it up, will pick up the sound, the picture, uh, watch television or listen to the radio. You will create your own reality the moment you begin to fully understand and truly master your thoughts and feelings. You must be in tune with your inner self, your outer physical self, as well as your spiritual true self and sense where your freedom truly lies. In addition to all that was mentioned before, you must now know that within these three personnel are where all of your power is stored. Remember, the universe is kind and not against you in any way. The most important question you must ask yourself has two parts. One, is this a friendly universe? Two, do I accept the universe friendliness? Most people have been conditioned to believe that life is hard, but this is far from the truth. You were originally created to enjoy an abundant life. Then one day our ancestors changed all that because of boredom and greed. Our government is doing the same thing to us, our children, our grandchildren, and generous that will come, blinding everyone more and more. I am here to wake you up to this awareness. So release all your fears and doubt and scream to the universe. Life is easy. It is good. That's all good things will come to me. I deserve all good things. Life's good to me. All good things are your birthright. You are the creator of yourself. Welcome to the magical you. You are your lower or higher self, both in the physical realm and the spiritual plane. You are made of energy, energy which is connected to the universe. How? Thoughts are vibrating energy that are propelled throughout the cosmos. 
It helps and even warns you who to trust and who not to. You must learn to sense and use negative energy and learn to transform it into a positive or neutral frequency. Example. Imagine that you hate your job and your life. So to change this, you bring in positive or neutral. Suggest to your work environment. This, at the same time, will bring a smile to your face and improve your social life. If you cannot do this, I suggest that you just walk away until whatever is negative in the atmosphere around you is transformed into a positive. Learn this concept leads to a fundamental change in behavior. In other words, when you study a concept, you must learn to comprehend it and internalize it. By doing this, your perspective is no longer the same since through this process, you have changed inside. You should then conduct your life differently as a result and align as well intertwine yourself with your true spiritual self. All that you obtain in your life comes from your subconscious. It responds precisely to your thoughts. Your conscious mind affects your reality by sending your subconscious mind what you expect to manifest into your reality. The universe takes orders from your subconscious mind, so your subconscious belief is the key. Therefore, if you surround yourself with negative thoughts, then negativity is what you will receive. Am I correct? On the contrary, your desire will come to be when you condition your subconscious to surround yourself with positive thoughts and get a firm idea about what you desire. Do this in a conjunctive with visualizing in the physical world. By doing this, it will come. You must know exactly the life you want right here, right now. You just have to create your ideas as a three-dimensional reality with your thoughts and intentions. Do not worry about how or when your desire will come to be. No tell the universe what to do or how to make it appear before you. Leave all those details to the universe because it will not reach you a moment before or after you want it, but when you least expect it or even after you have forgotten all about it. Therefore, when an opportunity calls, just let it in and care for it with appreciation. You are living the life you want at the present moment. You are living the reality your thoughts are reflecting. Therefore, if you feed your thoughts with negative energy, the universe reads them that way and hence you attract your fears. So once again, if you wish to change your life, you must change your way of thinking. Keep in mind that Moshe, Yeshua, Buddha, Muhammad, and even Einstein and others like them believe that if you should ask and believe, you will receive. All that you obtain in your life comes from your subconscious mind. It responds precisely to your thoughts. Now write down three questions about why you opened this book or three situations you feel will help you by reading this book. Simply write three questions or situations that may help you in your life, your career, your relationship, or in what you want out of this. For the moment, do not question why I am asking you to do this. I would just like you to trust me and yourself by doing this exercise. Ask and you shall receive. Unless you are precisely and asking for something that you want, you will receive differently. You must detach yourself from your fears, release them, and completely let go of what you think you want. You must open yourself to infinite possibilities no matter how you perceive them at first. Additionally, you must be willing to change your situation instead of making an excuse for it. My assignment with this book is to help you understand that you have to consistently 
and continuously ask the universe for what you want in a humble manner. You must align as well intertwine yourself with its energy source so that you can ask it anything and everything no matter what relative importance or impact it has to you. Write the statement I have asked you or else please close this book since it will not help you nor is it for you. Why are you on this planet? Why are we here in this existence? Earlier, I wrote the answer that you are originally here on vacation from the spiritual realm to have a physical matter life. This takes time and energy. You are here for a reason and purpose. To experience helping yourself live out your dreams and affect the physical world around you. You deserve this life, which is a privilege. Therefore, profit from this vacation and take advantage of it. Life is often compared to a journey. Just as you may begin a trip with no final destination in your mind, you could live your life without identifying its real purpose. If you do so, you are at risk of being caught up in what is called the business of life. Would you not agree that increasing your speed on a trip is pointless if you are not heading in the right direction? Likewise, looking for meaning in life by simply improving your business will bring only emptiness and not true fulfillment. The quest to understand why you are here transcends cultural and age difference. It seems from the profound requirement that you have a spiritual side that can remain unsatisfied even after your material requirement had been met. Consider how some have worked to fill this need in the search for the purpose of life. Many people associate such success with the attainment of fame, fortune, or power. However, are these things the measure of real success? True success, at the very least, must be linked to sound ethical principle and a noble purpose in life. What does it mean to you to be successful in life in general? Society has made you believe to be successful, you must work harder and longer hours. This is nonsense. You achieve more in less time when your personal and business time is balanced, when there is less conflict and stress. Working hard has little to do with success. Working smart with maximum effectiveness does though. You must love your career and not treat it as a job. If not, you are losing out. It is senseless to spend your time in something not personally rewarding and fulfilling. Do not take your career too seriously. Make it fun. You may believe that you must work longer and hard to survive, but this is a myth. You should work no more than 30 hours per week, 7 days, and spend at least one day just focused and thinking about better ways to live your life. Do you believe that those who have amazing lives work more than they should? Do you truly believe those who make more money than you work that much more than you do? No, not at all. Those who have successful lives work less and think more. Life follows the same concept as business and relationships. Less working hour plus more reflection time equals more wealth and satisfaction. Money is called currency because it is used as a media of exchanging energy from one entity to another. We will discuss how to use the universal law of creation and how other spiritual principles can be used to create a neutral or positive flow of currency energy to you in order to manifest the things that you want in life. You see, these people take the time to think, dream, and make their wishes happen. They are passionately hungry to secure a better, 
more exciting life than the rest of the world. They picture it clearly in their mind and hold on to that image steadily until it becomes a definite thought form. It is all up to you to see this. You have to know that life you want right here and demand that life now. So which one are you? Do you call for life you want? Do you call for who you want to be right here, right now? Do you demand that life? You have to live for that life now. Seeing life in a different perspective changes how you live because of how you conceptualize it. To illustrate, let me present these examples. Is it more difficult for you to make $10,000 in less than a year, that's 365 days, or for you to have the girl boy next door as a girl or boyfriend? Think consciously on this question before you answer it and then read the next paragraph. It is more difficult for you to make $1 million or for you to have Miss America, Miss Universe, or a world supermodel as your girl boyfriend? Okay. The only difference between these two statements is how you look at them as well as too hard or impossible. For example, if you would travel from Montreal to Florida by car or from Rome to Montreal by plane, what route do you believe will be longer? What route would take more time? Once again, think consciously on these questions. Only you can control what makes your life easier or harder. Only you can look at an obstacle as a problem or a solution. Life works on your own logic and belief. In your dreams, you must be specific about the nature of all of your wishes and desires. As I stated before, when you want to buy a new car or meet a beautiful woman or man, you must consider all possible details of this desire. What kind of car do you want? What price are you willing to spend? What color do you want? What make? What year? What model? What options? What kind of character and personality do you desire from the opposite sex? What nationality should she be or he be? What hair color and length? What body type? What age? What background? What other important qualities? Your mind gets confused with these options and loses direction if you are not focused.